Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Alejandro and on this channel we talk about family, fun, and filmmaking. On this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the time-lapse video that I shot in the previous video and we're going to see an idea of how I put everything together inside of the computer and the process that I take to actually achieve that. <laughs> Hi everybody, I hope you're doing amazing. I had such a great time the other day creating the time-lapse video at Menden Ponds Park. If you missed that video, check it up above. So before we jump onto the computer side, I want to discuss a little bit about what I did in the camera. Uh, basically to get these shots, I want to show you one of the shots that I did that I think turned out really well. This one was of the moon coming across the sky and it was transitioning from day to night and it turned out really, really good. I like a lot of the things about it. Uh, there were things that I didn't see there on the day that really showed up and I kind of knew that it was possible for it to show up but on my little screen on the phone, it, I couldn't tell. Uh, but I saw techniques from other YouTubers doing this so that's what I wanted to try. So when I went out and shot at night, I wanted to shoot really long exposures. So each photo, its shutter speed was set to 30 seconds and that allows for a really nice crisp image. The thing with the long shutter speed like that is that you need to make sure that your camera is stable. So I used my tripod. Um, ideally, you'd have a remote with you so that you don't have to touch it at all each time you take the photo, but in my case, I actually forgot the remote uh, so I was pushing it each time and that caused a little bit issues and I'll show you that in a little bit. Overall I was really happy with the way the photos came out for the time lapse. I wish I could have spent more time there but we were approaching the time that the park closed and I had already been shooting the time lapse videos for a few hours and I just couldn't get any more. The clip ended up being about four seconds long. Uh, part of the reason that you get such a crisp image is that the sensor gets a lot of time to take in the light and uh, detect where the light is and create a really nice image based off of that. The downside of that is that you can overexpose your shot. So what I did so that the shot was not overexposed, I actually had a variable ND filter and I adjusted the shot. So I took a few test shots before I started my sequence uh, just to see where I wanted the exposure to be and also anticipating that later on in the night the it was going to get darker and darker. So I wanted it to be a little bit bright when we started off but so that we can have still some detail when it goes into the night sequence. On the shot you'll see that there's this kind of like halo glow lens flare thing happening with the moon and I thought it was actually really cool the way it turned out. I think the reason that, that happened was that there was there were some finger print smudges on the lens. Uh, I could be wrong but I think that's why it happened and uh, but I didn't take it out because I just really really liked the way it looked so maybe in the future I might do that on purpose if I'm doing something like this but um, it was really only where the moon was. It was. The moon was also the brightest thing in the sky and uh, something else that I was really excited about was all the little stars that you can see in the sky. So there were these little dots and you can see them move across the night sky together with the moon. It was really, really cool. Another thing I was a little bit worried about and I didn't know how it was going to turn out was that there was a whole bunch of planes flying all over the sky and there was this big huge plane. You can actually see this. it streaking through the sky in one of the photos but it made it look really cool I think. Um, it kind of takes away from the nature aspect of the photo but it almost feels a little bit like kind of like shooting stars going through the sky uh, but they were all airplanes that were flying across the sky. Okay so going into the computer now. So the first thing that I did was transfer all the files from the SD card over to the local hard drive on the computer. The images were so big and it was already lagging to begin with so I wanted to make sure that I can squeeze out as much speed from my computer as I could. I actually shot all my photos in RAW so that way I had as much color information as possible 
And also I would be able to adjust the exposure a little bit in the sequence and have a lot more control. This is actually kind of a really cool thing that I get access to when I'm shooting a time sequence that I really don't get when I'm shooting video because my camera doesn't shoot in RAW. That would be amazing. Because I was shooting images rather than doing a video sequence, the image size was really huge. So uh, all of the shots that I did, I had to stabilize afterwards because I had some movement happening in the shot just from me pushing the button on the camera. So having all that extra image size was really helpful to be able to get the image to look as clear as possible in the final output. After I spent some time tweaking the images to look exactly the way I wanted them inside of Photoshop, I saved them all out as a JPEG sequence. It does lose some quality at this stage, but it still has that large image size, so I can actually scale that down when I need to inside of uh, Premiere and that will still give me a good quality image. Because I did all my color correction inside of Photoshop, I don't need to do anything here in Premiere like I normally do. I just brought in the image sequence and what I am going to do now is adjust it because it, when you bring in an image sequence by default, it puts it to 29.97 frames per second. And that is not what I want. I want it to actually be at 24 frames a second. So that way I get more of that cinematic film look. Looking at the time lapse in the Premiere preview window inside of my Mac was actually really difficult and slow. Uh, I never could get a true kind of look. So what I ended up doing was rendering a video of that once I lined it up the first and the last shot the way I wanted. And um, I just rendered it even before I did any uh, stabilization or anything like that just to see what the image looked like. I rendered it at 4K. Premiere on my PC can actually handle bigger video file sizes but I was working on my Mac because I have Photoshop on that computer and I don't on my PC and transferring the files just took so long to do that I figured even if it was a little bit slower on the Mac that maybe it'd make it up in not having to transfer over the files. I don't know if that was the best decision. Probably in the future, what I'm going to do is transfer all the files over to the PC. Hey, Penny wanted to stop by and say hi in the middle of this video. Say hi, Penny. Hi. What were you just doing? You were eating yogurt while I recorded a video? <laughs> uh, she has this awesome little dress. It's actually really huge on her. It's probably meant for like a teenager or a much bigger child than her, but she loves it because it makes her feel like Elsa. Don't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, go finish eating your food. Okay. Let's take a look at that first render that I did and you can see how shaky it is at some points. Uh, the video actually looks really cool. I like the way it turned out. Um, I just wanted to get that extra stabilization. I didn't do a camera move on this one just because I wanted to make sure I got a really clean version of this and I didn't want to mess up the camera move into a time lapse that I was going to take several hours to make. Although now thinking about it, I might go back and work on it a little bit more and add a post camera move because I have plenty of image size that I can actually go in and zoom in or out to be able to create a little bit of a camera move so it's not completely static. Let me know if you guys think I should do that. I think it might be kind of a cool idea. Let me know down in the comments. I brought it back into Premiere and I used Warp Stabilizer. I used all the default settings and it turned out good. It gave me the result that I wanted and the shot looked awesome. And here is what that rendered output looks like. I shot several more time-lapse videos during that hike and I th some of them were more successful than others and I think I had a lot of fun doing it either way. I actually am going to put them all together into a sequence that is part of Yankee's Outdoor Adventures time-lapse challenge. So if you guys want to see the full sequence when it is out, I'll put a link to it here in this video. It might be... Um, 
a few weeks before all the submissions are submitted there but uh, I'll do another video in the future also to let you guys know when that comes out because I'm actually really excited about doing this time lapse and seeing what everybody else comes up with also if you are interested in doing your own time lapse for the challenge I'll leave a link up above right now all right as always please like share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video